Welcome to the Witcher Math channel. It's time to take a look at scale factor and area. And we're going to use the rectangle models to uh, hopefully help you learn something very important about the relationship between scale factor and area. So the question you're going to be able to answer by the end of this video is, how does scale factor affect area? Okay. Let's use a little example here and let's uh, define what scale factor is. First of all, say I've got a uh, rectangle here. By the way, this works for all shapes, not just rectangles, but uh, we're keeping it simple. There's a rectangle, two by three, and the area is uh, two times three, which is six. Right? I think we could all agree on that. Okay, now scale factor is sometimes thought of as a multiplier. And what that means is if I have a scale factor of, uh, let's say, 2, that means all dimensions, dimension is another word for measurement, all dimensions or measurements are multiplied by 2, by the scale factor, okay? So, in this example, what I would end up with is 2 times 2 is 4, 3 <clears throat> times 2 is 6, I'd have my new rectangle, it's my copy, over here, that was my original, okay? And what we notice about the copy, if we're going to calculate the area, it's 24, okay? Now let's compare the area of the original to the area of the copy, 6 and 24, but the scale factor was 2. Now a common mistake people make on scale factor area problems is they would go, oh, original area 6, scale factor 2, new area 12. But as you can see, that's really, it's not true when you keep in mind that scale factor is multiplying all dimensions. Now let's use our uh, copy over here to uh, show you a little something. <clears throat> now here's our original, back to our 2 by 3 original, right? And when I apply the scale factor, that's like doubling it, right? Times two. Three times two gives me two threes, right? Which means I've got my original, and now I've got effectively another original added to it, okay? Now, if I take this dimension and apply the scale factor, what I end up with, really, is four originals, because I've got scale factor being applied twice. Scale factor applied to two dimensions. So you can see how having a scale factor of two is actually the same as multiplying by 4 to get my new area. Okay, do another example here and then we're going to have a conclusion. Okay, example 2. Example 2. Are you paying attention? Okay, obviously that's a 7, right? Okay, let's say we've got um, a 4 by 5 rectangle, and that's my original, and the area is 20, right? 4 times 5. And let's say I want you to apply 
a scale factor of 3. What is the new area? Well, we're going to use a generic rectangle model here. So this one's not to scale. We just know it's going to be bigger, right? So if I take my original dimensions here, there's my 4 times 5. It's my original. My scale factor is 3, which means 5 is going to get multiplied 3 times. And it also means my 4 is going to happen 3 times. And look what happens. My scale factor is 3, but my original is being multiplied by 9. The new area is original times 9, which is 180. Okay. Well, that's now it's time for us to make some kind of connection so we don't have to keep having these aha moments on every single problem, we can come up with a formula, an algorithm, if you will, an equation. And here's what it is. <clears throat> What's the relationship between 3 and 9? Well, it's easy to see. I've got 3 times 3 equals 9, right? Just like when we go back to our previous example, where our scale factor was 2, the original got multiplied by 4. So it was 2 times 2. See something going on here? 2 times 2, 4. 3 times 3, 9. What would happen if the scale factor was 4? Right, it'd be 4 times 4, so the original would be times 16. So here's our conclusion. If we take the original area and it gets multiplied by the scale factor times the scale factor, right, that way plus that way, both dimensions, it equals the copy. Let's put this in generic terms now, which is called an algorithm. You'll want to stay tuned for the next video where we see if this still works when we're shrinking things. We're only talking about enlargements right now. Does this still work if we're shrinking things? Let's find out. Anyway, here's our generic terms algorithm. 20 represents the area of the original. Scale factor times scale factor represents scale factor squared. And our 180 represents the area of the copy. Oh, there's our algorithm. So anytime you have the area of an original shape and you're given a scale factor, all you do is take the scale factor, square it, and you've got the new area. And hopefully using these rectangle models here has helped to prove why this works and to help you get it straight in your head. Stay tuned for the next exciting video where we apply fraction scale factors to make reductions. And let's see if this rectangle model still works. Thanks so much for watching. See you later.